video, I'll be uh, experimenting with a oxyhydrogen uh, flame. Uh, the gas is derived from electrolyzing water. There is a uh, electrolysis cell for the water. Um, I'm just doing standard brute force electrolysis. That is a um, a bubbler or a flashback arrester it forces the gas to go in a one way, so that if it, the flame tries to go back to the to the cell, it can't. It gets stopped at the arrester. So that's a uh, that's the torch. There's me lighting the torch. Uh, the torch is just made from you know standard gas plumbing parts, and um, you can see me cutting into an aluminum uh, aluminum can. It just cuts it's like th it cuts through that can like uh, like it's nothing. It's really interesting. It's, it's a strange flame. Like, the flame, unless it's cutting something, is invisible. And it's also not very hot unless it's cutting something. Uh, the minute it starts cutting, uh, it, it it becomes hotter. And the harder, the more it has to work to cut, the hotter it becomes. It's it's interesting. So, like, while it will, it, like a leaf, for example, it will just vaporize a leaf immediately. Um, and, like, you know, metal, it will go through it pretty quickly. But the, the more it has to work to get through it, the hotter it becomes on the, on the handle of the torch. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so there I am cutting uh, an aluminum <coughs> tube. And again, it's just wasting the tube as if it were, you know, made out of paper. It's very, uh, it's, it must be very hot. Um, to, and as I said, it seems to get hotter depending on what it's, what it's doing. And, and becomes visible when it's working, but when it's not engaged, it's it's invisible. The flame. You can see it there. It, it glows very brightly. Uh, it's kind of that standard welding, you know, effect where uh, when you when you go in through metal and it burns so brightly that you can't, you shouldn't look at it, or it might you know injure your eyes. The same. This is it's absolutely the case with this. Uh, you can't tell with the camera so much, but when you're actually looking at it, um, <clears throat> you know, it's a bright like the sun. You you have to look away from it or, or use proper eye protection. Now I'm cutting into a, a piece of steel, which is from a transformer. So that's laminated, um, you know, transformer core steel. And, uh, you know, you see it again, growing, glowing, going through the steel, uh, glowing very... Brightly, you know, sort of molten steel effect there. It's uh, it's extremely hot, and just cuts right through, cuts a hole right through it. And um, yeah, so this the the f the energy released from from water. When you recombine the hydrogen and oxygen, is it's it's very clean. You know, it burns, it gets hot very quickly, it cools off very quickly. It um, it doesn't release any toxic um, fumes. It just releases lots of heat, and the you know the exhaust is of course water, uh, so it's safe to work work on indoors. If you're like a jeweler or something, you know, you, you can use this type of torch and not have to worry about carbon monoxides or anything like that. Here I am working on a um, piece of glass and, uh, you know, it, it, it cracked the thermal um, uh, shock to the, to the glass causes it to break. The glass just like fractures. But uh, after a while, it gets so hot that it, it you know, it takes, it glows um, red, sort of molten you know, silicon oxide. Um, there's the bubbler. You can see the the hydrogen gas um, bubbling, oxyhydrogen gas bubbling through there. That's the again the flashback arrester operating. And there is a power meter. So I am drawing about 500 watts um, off the wall uh, in order to power the uh, the torch. So here is <coughs> um, a thermometer. That's a fluke um, type three thermocouple, and um, you know I I wanted to measure the flame the best that I could, and um, so I just took the flame and put it on the thermocouple, uh, and and it w it didn't go up as high as I expected. I'm not sure if you know or maybe I'm not um, maybe I am not um, you know 
measuring it the most optimal way, but as high as I could get it to go was somewhere around 720 degrees. Um, but I know that 720 degrees Celsius is not hot enough to go through the, uh, to, through aluminum. So it must be actually hotter than that. But, um, but as I said, it, there seems to be this effect with this torch where it only gets as hot as it needs to <laughs> for, for doing the job. So whereas it, the, the handle gets really hot when I'm cutting through the aluminum, it got less hot when I was applying it to the thermocouple metal. So I don't know what that means um, exactly. But I'd like to try to figure out what the actual temperature of the flame is or find a way where I can measure it well. Well, thanks very much for watching this video, and I'll be doing more with this soon.